And welcome back to Across the Board with Ian the Colonel here on Hawk Radio, hawkradio.org. We have some of the best bands in the world, actually the best bands in the world here on the, on the show on a weekly basis. But I have to say that, you know, I think I have such a high respect for singer-songwriters and, and, you know, just groups and, and artists that play acoustic shows because there's no production to hide behind. And one of those artists is with us right now, Graham Colton. Graham, are you with us? I'm with you. Great. Great to have you on the show. Thanks for taking the time. We really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, like I said, I appreciate your type of, of artistry a little bit more than some bands because when you're out there playing acoustic shows and, you know, you're playing solo, you started with a band, then you went solo, you're out there and there's nothing to hide behind. You know, it's it's your voice with no productions, your guitar, uh, and I just think there's a certain, I don't know, like zenith of talent that goes along with that. Uh, well, thanks, man. Yeah, I, I uh, actually, strangely and ironically, I actually started uh, solo back in high school when I used to play kind of open mic nights, mm-hmm. coffee houses and stuff, and then, you know, really, really didn't want to be a solo guy. Just, I wanted to be in a rock band, and that's kind of how the band came together, and uh, I've kind of, uh, you know, found a nice balance, I guess, right now of, of playing full, you know, rock and roll shows and also wanting to do acoustic, you know, acoustic shows as well. Right. And you're coming to our area. Now, you're on tour throughout the entire country right now. Um, you know, and again, we have listeners right now from all over the world, um, but I know you're going to be at Ram's Head in Annapolis, uh, you know, coming near us very soon. So we're looking forward to that show. But let's get yeah. into a, a little bit of your background and then we'll talk about the tour coming up a little bit. So you're actually from Oklahoma City. And I think probably a little-known fact about fact about you is you were the first quarterback for Wes Welker. You were actually his <laughs> high school quarterback. It's funny. Wes, Wes became a superstar, and people want to know about my high school football days. It's kind of funny. But, it, uh, yeah, it, I, was, I, I, I have said that um, I get to live the ultimate kind of Friday Night Lights experience. Absolutely. Um, and, honestly, it's, it's a major uh, – you know, a lot, of, a lot of times you don't really hear – you know, music people talk about sports, or sports people talk about music, because mm-hmm. it doesn't really go hand in hand. But right. I've been pretty lucky to, you know, in a way, kind of have my high school experience kind of affect, you know, not only my life but my songwriting. And sure. I feel like, in a roundabout way, it's all kind of in there. I had a great experience, and you know, that's the stuff that I write about. You know, young life and love and heartbreak and you know, everything in between. Now, did that help you? I mean, being out there in front of a big crowd on a weekly basis, I mean, you set state records for passing. I mean, you know, you weren't just a, a regular football player. You were out there doing big things on the field. Did that help you get comfortable playing on stage in front of several people as well? Uh, that's an interesting question. I mean, yeah, maybe. Maybe it was. I mean, there's definitely a similar, uh, you know, I mean, there, there's definitely a similar, I guess, rhythm, you should say, no pun intended, <laughs> on, on, you know, sort of being on a team, I guess, with anybody that's played sports. I think there's a similar, you know, there's also camaraderie, being in a band on the road, traveling with your best friend. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, I, I mean, I, it's funny. I was I was asked a question uh, a couple nights ago from somebody back in Oklahoma. I was at dinner, and he said, you know, is it is it more nerve-wracking to play, you know, for, on Friday night in a football game, or is it, or is it you know, or going on stage, and right. I said, "Oh, football for sure is is much more nerve wracking because you know, I mean, one thing can go wrong, right, in a game, and you lose the game. But you know, I, I mean, you know, there's a million things go wrong in a show. And that's what makes a show kind of fun sometimes. That's know? right. That's a great question. Yeah, I like that. Now you kind of you kind of got your first big break, I guess, through the internet. But really, the biggest break was uh, when Adam Duritz of Counting Crows got a hold of your CD and sort of put you on for there, and you started opening for Counting Crows. I know you've played with some of your idols. I mean, you've pl- you've toured with John Mayer, Dave Matthews, Guster, Gavin DeGraw, you know, Kelly Clarkson, obviously, a lot of those those biggest bands. What have you learned from some of those bands, as far you know, whether it be a tip on getting through making life easy on the road or songwriting you know what's what are some of those tips that you've learned advice wise uh a couple things one when you're on the road and you know you when you when you're able to get a writer from um a club that's where the you know they ask you what you need backstage right in the backstage area mm-hmm. you know a lot of bands have like crazy stuff and certain needs and wants all brown m&ms uh, that kind of thing yeah yeah all brown m&ms exactly <laughs> the, uh the one thing i've learned is to always ask for uh, five pairs of black socks okay 
<laughs> what? That's a good one. Why is that? If you Just... think about it, you got five guys in the band, and you're lugging in your suitcases every day, and there's nothing better than walking into a venue before sound check and putting on a clean pair of socks. I you like don't it. You have to worry about washing them, finish it. You know, guys need to stay clean on the road. So that's, that's a good point. Thing. A lot of bands do that. You, you go to their backstage area, you see black socks. How do you feel about iTunes? For, and I know you didn't put sides out on iTunes um, right. you know, for specific reasons, but how do you feel about iTunes being singles, writing singles, as to po- opposed to writing complete albums? Well, I mean, it, it, it's kind of a, uh, a double-edged sword, I guess is the right phrase, just because do feel like you know back to what you were uh, you were kind of talking about I do feel like having uh, you know only you know having 99 cent downloads available it does force the artist to make every song good right I think it puts more pressure on certain songs and you know it used to be it's where yeah I mean you could really kind of phone it in and you know have your two standout tracks and 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 you know a lot of people used you know, tracks two through twelve to uh, to be experimental and try new things and right. you know, make some of the great albums the best ever. But I think a lot of other artists, you know, and, and me just being a fan, yeah, it is frustrating when you when you buy an album and you just you just know that they didn't care about the other tracks. Agreed. Um, so I do think ninety nine downloads are good for you know putting emphasis on a song by song, um, you know, standard, I guess. Mm-hmm. But on the flip side, uh, it has completely shifted the landscape of, of you know of the album, you know, and having having a, a you know an album that ebbs and flows and all you know a collection of songs you know that creates kind of a body of work. Absolutely, um, and I know you and, include a lot of extras in your iTunes purchases as well. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's the thing is, you know, I, I don't claim to to be you know. Uh, one of the the greatest ever by any stretch. I mean, I I do feel like I uh, I try to at least pay attention and sort of follow my instincts on what is, you know, what's going to be a great collection of songs. And mm-hmm. I've I've you know the great thing about you know doing these EPs and releasing B sides that I've I've now had the chance to do now that I'm an independent artist again is that uh, you know some of my some of the songs that I think are are really strong and some of my better songs. They just don't work on an album. Right. I I will leave them off, you know, intentionally. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe they're, you know, maybe other people would disagree with me. I should have had that song on there and not this one. But for me, man, it it is very personal about how 11, 12, 13 songs coexist together. Absolutely. Pacific Coast Eyes is the single that's out now, the title track. And you can actually watch the video on your uh, your website, GrahamColton.com. But... I love the concept of it. It's a, it's a great. It's it's romantic. It's funny. Um, you know, it's well shot. So talk a little bit about. Uh, you know, I know you said you you were big on the director for this video. You went out and got him yourself, and he yeah. eventually talked you into drinking rainwater out of your wallet. Let's talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot to talk about because the video really is is the, uh, the really the introduction to the album, and and uh, you know the song itself was the last song I wrote for the album, and really. You know, I think it really tipped the entire record. Obviously, the title was taken from the album, uh, uh, and I guess to backtrack just a little bit, mm-hmm. um, you know, the 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 album just felt. Uh, I wanted the album to feel warmer, uh, lighter, um, you know, and a little bit more fun. I guess is the right. I mean, I don't know is the right word. It makes uh, sense. You know, I just I don't know. I'm at a place where I just kind of let go of a lot of stuff, and I think some of the songs. You know, from from Drive, I think reminded me of just kind of fun, you know, driving songs. No pun intended. Right. And Pacific Coast Eyes w- uh, was just kind of one of those that kind of started out as a joke. I really didn't think the song would ever be for me. I thought it might be for another artist. And as I continued to kind of follow the track and follow the song, you know, it like I said, it kind of shifted everything. And when I finished it, um, I, I I told some you know uh, family members who are actually out in Los Angeles and in the business or in the uh, television business. And I have a couple friends that are in the movie business. And I just said, look, I want to make a video, do it myself. I want to work with great people who are hungry and I want to do something different. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do with all due respect to my last video. You know, I really didn't have any control over that and it's totally fine, but it's, you know, I don't want to be a guy playing a guitar for three and a half minutes. Yeah. Thinking. Kind of cookie, cookie cutter, right? 
Now, how did the rainwater out of the wallet taste? Oh, yeah. It, uh, let me, honestly, it was cold that night in L.A., and uh, the director said, here, I want you to drink water out of this wallet, and it tasted like uh, leather uh, water. <laughs> well, there you go. So exactly <laughs> so like we thought. Like, there was even some old money in there, like some some, uh, some cash in there. I just oh. was like, oh, God, this is. Yeah, it was, it was, but it was funny. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's worth it for the laugh, exactly. Yeah, and, and that's again, that's what sticks out to me the most from the video. I was like, I had to watch that I again. Almost, I was like, well, we almost left that part out. Uh, I, but, uh, but I'm glad we, I'm glad we kept it in. Yeah, it's a good call. Now, you know, covers interest me as well. You know, I think it's a good window into the musical influences and, and what that artist likes. Now, I really found it interesting that you covered a song that I think is a fantastic song, but really a sleeper, and that's Michael Penn's No Myth. Yeah. So you actually covered that. What made you? I love that song, and it's like the only song he ever did. And then he kind of disappeared into obscurity. I think he might be a producer now. What made you choose right. that song? Oh man, I don't know. You know, picking a cover song, I mean, is 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 really. I mean, I don't know. It, it's a tough thing because, you know, again, I'm such a fan of other people's music. Mm-hmm. I never think that I can ever do anybody's music as good as the original artist. Um, but Michael Michael Penn's music has certainly uh, it connected with me. Um, has over the years um and that one you know it, it's always fun to find a song that people you know maybe have heard before and recognized but might not have you know listened to it in a while mm-hmm. or or kind of know the backstory of even some of the one-hit wonders out there you know have a great backstory because you know these songs are kind of in our conscious and I, I felt like that one i could really you know put a little twist on and, and you know pay tribute to who I think a guy is definitely an unsung hero. Absolutely. And I think, um, you know, not being a great guitar player myself, I think it would be a fun song to play on an acoustic guitar. It just, because it's, it's easy, yeah. but it seems like it would be just like a fun, poppy song to play and get into. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Now, you're obviously on tour a lot. Uh, what do you take with you on the tour bus or plane or whatever? What do you take with you that kind of keeps you sane out there on the road? You know, we we talked to uh, Stephen Christian from Anne Berlin, and, you know, we act talked to him about the rock and roll lifestyle, and he said, well, it's really only glamorous for 45 minutes a night when we're on stage. Otherwise, we're kind of bored. It's not glamorous on stage either. Uh, yeah. So, um, you, know, we, you know, how do you, I guess, you know, kind of stay normal, stay grounded, and stay sane through that other, the other 23 hours of the day? Oh, man, you know, it sounds, sounds corny, but, man, a, a laptop computer and an iPhone go mm-hmm. a long way, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, and I'll tell you, I, I remember, uh, this makes me feel very old, which I'm only 29, but I mean, I, Just the, a kid. when I first hit the road in 2002 and three, I mean, you know, GPS units for the van was, were, they were like 400 bucks. So, yeah. you know, we couldn't afford one of those. And I remember printing off that quest sheets for every day. And mm-hmm. It's just amazing how, you know, the littlest things can change the whole day Absolutely. You know, when you're out there. Is there yeah. an album that you own, or I guess iTunes, you know, digital copy or whatever, that would surprise your fans? Like, you know, do you have Wu-Tang on your you know, iTunes or something like um, that? I used to think of country music as as kind of, you know, really just kind of laughable and, mm-hmm. and a kind of a beyond a guilty pleasure. Right. But <laughs> as country music has sort of, you know, I, I don't want to say... Well, as as it's evolved, as it's evolved, and mm-hmm. as it's changed, and you know, morphed kind of into you know, kind of pop music almost. Um, I kind of find myself wanting to you listen to the entire records, it's not just a single. I mean, you listen to Lady Antebellum and Keith Urban and people like that. I mean, you know, I yeah, I'm real. You know, I'm still learning how to be a songwriter and how to craft songs, and, and you know, really, in three and a half minutes, you know, try to. Uh, you know, pull at people's heartstrings and, and my own. Uh, and I think country music, man, when it's done right, I mean, it's it's it's, it's really inspiring to me, sure. especially now that I'm a little older and you can appreciate the kind of three and a half minute life lessons. They're not just little jokes anymore. You know, I like that. Well so, said. I think some of those records actually are. are, are you'll you'll find me. Uh, I, I can rock out to those in my car, definitely. <laughs> okay. Now, again, you're listening to Across the Board with Ian the Colonel here, uh, Sans the Colonel, who is out with the flu at the moment. Um, we're here with Graham Colton. Now, Graham, if you had five to ten minutes left, depending on the song length, in your life, what song would you want to play or hear? Well, I, I'd, probably, I'd probably do it listening. I, I would probably listen, okay. you know, rather than play, um, just so I could kind of, uh, <laughs> you know, relax and not have to. <laughs> You know, not have to uh, to be up there, right? Um, 
But man, that that is wow! What a great question. Thank you. Um, I would say there's 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 probably, I mean, there's probably got to be a Beatles song in there, just because you know the Beatles mm-hmm. to me are, are are such a huge influence. Even though my music, I don't think sounds anything like the Beatles. Right. It's just amazing how much ground they cover. Sure. You know, when you're just you know, it's it's an interesting and hard, difficult thing to describe. So you know, for, there's there's got to be. Uh, yeah, there's got to be a Beatles track. What would it be? Uh, it would be probably, for me, um, you know, maybe Here, There, and Everywhere. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, maybe probably Free Fallen, Tom Petty. Oh, good. Maybe. Yeah. That would be yeah, a good one to go one, out to, certainly. yeah. That would be a great one to go out to. That's yeah, right. <laughs> Why do you continue to play music, Graham? Uh, you know, is it the paycheck? Is it is it a catharsis it's that you get from? Definitely not the paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> is it you know? Is it a catharsis you get from the songwriting, or is it the feeling that you get back from live audiences? It's all of the above. I mean, I I definitely think that um, you know I love performing live. There's nothing like playing your music and having people sing the words back to you. You know, um, it must be incredible. One of the most rewarding experiences. But really, you know, for me, as I've as I've, you know, continued to play music as a, as a quote unquote, like profession, for me, the most rewarding thing is, is, you know, having an idea that is in your head and it, then it, well, you know, goes from your head or your heart onto paper and then into, into a song and then the song becomes this thing. And, and it's, you know, it's kind of like you have the, 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 you know, I, I've gotten a very small taste of, of, an idea or a life experience literally manifesting itself into something that changes your existence forever. Mm-hmm. Kind of sounds pretty deep, but I really don't know how I couldn't do it, you know? Um, I, I don't think it sounds I, too deep. I mean, I think that's the answer that I would, you know, an answer like that is what I would expect from someone that writes songs like you do. So, yeah, it does it, your songs are deep, which is a good thing. So, Well, thanks. Yeah. And, and it's not just... You know, I don't want to. I don't want to to make it seem like every time I sit down, I'm looking for a lottery ticket. Right. It really isn't that. It, it because even you know even the songs that nobody ever hears. I mean, it kind of like I can't tell you how many songs I've written that you know have never been heard or no sure. one really will ever hear. But they, you, know, you write five or six of these to get that one song that kind of you know those five or six send you on this path and you get to this other one. You right. know that kind of changes everything it's you know, even like pacific coast eyes i mean you know that song is certainly a fun song it, it's light but it but it definitely i mean it, it changed kind of the entire landscape of what my new record's all about mm-hmm. how it feels how i wanted photos to look and how i how i sort of what kind of show i want to play in that city you know i mean the, you know and it's and you know there's songs that are kind of a polar opposite to that track on the record you mm-hmm. know um song like 20 something is about confusion and about trying to move forward and get past this place and feeling in between and you know it really couldn't be more opposite than a song like pacific coast eyes in my opinion well but go ahead the two coexist you know and the two can still live together and the record still to me light and warm and summery and fun and you know yeah, and I think that sincerity comes through in your music. You know, this is obviously the first time that you and I have spoken, and you know, I, before we've talked to someone and interviewed them, we never know what they're going to be like. But right. you are—you come through to me as the person that you are in those songs. So you're saying that you write songs not to get on Letterman, but just because that's what you're feeling. And I think that sincerity comes through in your music, and that's why people enjoy it so much. Well, I hope so. I mean, that's a huge compliment because you know, really, that's that's the. You know, as I've as I've hoped to to have gotten better as a songwriter, you know, there's also sometimes I feel like you know, as you you maybe improve as a writer, or as a, as a quote unquote artist, you maybe lose a little something along the way. If that makes sense, I mean, okay. a part of me feels like some of my best songs I wrote when I was 18. Okay, you know, a song like Cellophane Girl I wrote when I was 17. Love that song. I changed it. You know, I had I had a producer tell me to change it uh, to a different song. Some right. people like the different song. Some people like Cellophane Girl, but it but it has stuck with me. And I'm 29 now. You know, it's it, it so sometimes I feel like the uh, you know you lose something when you get better. You know, and or you get you get I, not better, but you get more uh, seasoned as a 
as a writer and okay. you kind of know this chord go with that chord and this melody can't work with this melody but really when i was 17 in my bedroom just writing because i only knew how to play four chords there's kind of a magic to that time that right to go back to more emotion than process maybe yeah i mean so you're always trying to, to like you said i mean just be as honest as possible and not not have things watered down mm -hmm. um so you just, you know, you want, I mean, you want your personality to come through. And that really is more difficult than, than you would think. Right. I, I would imagine. Just, you know. I can't imagine. Like, Song or, songwriters, period, just blow my mind. I, I can't fathom that, that skill, you know. So it, it all yeah. is, is uh, more than I can imagine, I'll tell you. But that yeah, is, I mean, I always, I always say, and one of the things on the new album that I was my criteria is, you know, I think there's kind of two ways to look at it. One way is you can write a song that, uh, is so good that really anybody could co it, go in and sing, and it would still be a great song, which okay. I think is an awesome thing. I mean, some of the best songs ever written, you're kind of like, man, anybody can sing that song, right? and it would be a hit, or mm -hmm. it would be, you know, everybody would love it, or it would really just be an incredible song. Right. But there's, there's other tracks that really only you could do better than anybody else. Right. You know, it has to be a Graham Colton song, because... Not because I have a better voice than this person or whatever, because I'm not the greatest singer in the world or the greatest guitar player. But I think on this album, my my biggest thing was to have songs that I felt like were my songs. Right. Um, and as a songwriter, you know, I, I you you want to write things that are universal and things that a lot of people can relate to, but. Mm -hmm. You know, that was a huge criteria for me is to have songs that, you know, I felt like only I could do, um, you know, better than, than anyone else. Right. And I don't, I don't mean to, to make it seem like I'm trying to be, you know, ego driven or whatever, but right. it's just, it, it's, it's more about your, you know, your personality kind of dictating. Yeah, the whole package, what you have to offer. You know, absolutely. that makes hopefully that makes sense. That does make sense, absolutely. Now that leads me to my last question: What do you want? You know, you're still new and you're young in the game. What do you want your legacy to be? Your sort of musical epitaph when you decide to, you know, hang up your guitar if you ever do. What do you want people to look back and say? You know, what what do you want to have accomplished and and meant to the musical industry or or your family and friends? Man, that's. That's that's definitely the question that you try to answer every day. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, I, I hopefully people just think that I've been all all along, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know, I know I'll probably make some missteps and maybe try some things create you know creatively that that you know people might say that was that was a misstep or it didn't work or that's a learning process. But you know, man, yeah, I think that you learn from all of it. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot along the way, and and it's crazy you you say that I'm a young guy and I appreciate that but you know I mean I've been doing this almost 10 years now um, as a as a professional musician right. and I just feel like I'm sort of close to maybe kind of figuring it out <laughs> <You know? laughs> I feel like I'm just getting started you right know, which is a, which is a great feeling because I'm I'm so energetic and you know confident about the future mm -hmm. but man it's it's there's a reason why some of the greatest artists of all time you know it took them two three even four albums to really you know, get it going, right. you know, where they were really known by the world. Right. Um, so I hope that people just look at my hopeful evolution and just kind of say, you know, that guy, you know, was just honest about what he, what he does and what he puts on his albums and, and how he does it, you right. know. And I think your music appeals to a lot of, uh, you know, ages as well. I know younger people who love the music, older people who love your stuff, and I'm just a couple years older than you, and, you know, so it's right, you know, kind of in my wheelhouse. But, uh, you know, it's appreciated by so many people, and I think that's fantastic. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Yeah, absolutely. So, again, the new album, Pacific Coast Eyes, it drops April 5th. The uh, new song is out right now, Pacific Coast Eyes, and the uh, video, which you can check out on GrahamColton.com. You're also on MySpace.com slash Graham Colton. You can listen to a few songs off the new album, songs off the older albums. And, of course, you're everywhere. You're on Twitter. You're on I Like. You're on Facebook. A little bit of everything, right? Yeah, you got yeah. it. And that's actually you on there? or you know, you? That, that's me, man. I will say that is all me. Pretty, <laughs> uh, I try to stay pretty active. That's great. Yeah, and, and I know, again, people really appreciate that instead of just some you know record company intern it's actually you on there you know replying to right. posts and that sort of thing so 
That's that great. Would be, uh, that'd be a very bad thing. <laughs> yeah, that in wouldn't be. answering the questions for you. Yeah, that wouldn't be honest. A little insincere there. Graham, again, I cannot tell you how much we appreciate the time. Uh, you know, Pacific Coast Eyes, go out and get it. See this man on the road. Um, I haven't had the chance to see you live yet, but we'll be at that Annapolis show um, and really looking forward to that. So, uh, yep. and, and where where else are you touring right now? So again, we have people everywhere over the world listening right now. Yeah, I mean, there'll be more dates coming in literally daily. Okay. Um, so we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do almost all of Texas. Mm -hmm. We just did, we just did a run through the Midwest. Um, we're gonna do you know a handful of shows in the East Coast. We're gonna do uh, you know a little bit of the South, and you know I'm gonna be. Uh, trying to get the music out there as much as possible so i'll be bouncing around doing kind of sporadic shows of show in los angeles coming up and, great uh yeah so the, yeah, there's just definitely just keep in touch facebook myspace website or uh just ask me and i'll tell you <laughs> where i'm coming great sounds good graham again thank you so much pacific coast eyes april 5th go out and get it get the whole album don't just buy a couple songs although i'm sure just a couple of songs are good but every song on the album will be good so yeah. do your ears a favor and get the entire album. A lot of pressure. <laughs> I'm Thanks. sure it'll be great, man. Absolutely. So Thanks. this has been uh, Graham Colton on here with uh, Ian the Colonel on Across the Board on Hawk Radio, hawkradio.org.